Good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's meeting. I hope everyone had a very happy new year. We look forward to another better year. And with that thought in mind, I'd ask our city clerk to give us a thought for the week. Thank you, Mayor. Cheers to a new year and another chance for us to get it right. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. <laughs> call the 19th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Would you please call the roll. Boren? Here. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Excuse. Graf? Excuse. Hannah? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clayunis? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Ryan? Here. Susha? Here. Vanderweel? And were hassled. 14 present. Quorum is present. President Berg, would you please lead us in the pledge? Yes. Mm -hmm. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, President Berg. Alderman Bourne. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I was wondering if we could have a moment of silence for uh, President Ford, who's being buried tomorrow. Right on my agenda. Yes, by all means, uh, I'd ask for a moment of silence in <clears throat> honor of our president. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Approval of the minutes, President Burke. Ah, uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I move to approve the minutes as entered on the record. Second. Motion and second to approve the minutes. Is there any discussion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Mayor's appointments, uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, <clears throat> Hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. Special Committee on Policies and Ordinances Relating to Licensed Activities. All the persons Jeff Radke, Peter Guskey, Richard Hires, William Gottsacker, Wayne Emmer, and non-voting members Chuck Adams, Assistant City Attorney, Deputy Chief Alan Shervin, Police Department, Ann Berg, Representative of the Sporting Area School District, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Other Drugs Task Force. All appointed uh, January 2nd and to expire 43007, signed by the mayor. This list is, has been put together, um, and we don't have a resume or bio for each one. We weren't able to do that in this short of time. And we do need to be moving with this committee so that they can conduct their business. So I'd ask. I move for suspension. Second. Motion and a second to suspend. Is there any objection to suspension? I ask for a motion to confirm. Motion to confirm. Second. Motion and second to confirm. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Appointment is confirmed. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Madam City Clerk, public forum. Yes, thank you. Um, first on our list is Henry Capitello. And Henry, can I have your home address, please? Yes, that's uh, 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan. And I am here representing Home, Inc. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay. I am here today to speak on a resolution that was re presented by Alderman Rene Shush at the last council meeting and is on your agenda for tonight. The resolution, if passed, would bar individuals that are not residents of the city of Sheboygan from speaking during the public forum. Ask yourself, why would the city council want to limit public speech of any individual, especially since one of the mayor's main platforms was open government? The answer to that question is quite simple. Who has come to these council chambers and has spoken out about this administration and some council members and who is not a city resident? It is quite evident that that person is myself. It does not surprise me of the measures that this administration will undertake to silence any dissenting opinions regarding its actions or policies. Again, the powers that be are so threatened and intimidated by dissenting views that they look to limit free speech. 
one of this country's most valued civil liberties. It has been my own personal experience that some council members and this administration will go to just about any extremes to try to make it di difficult for me and other individuals that dare question some council action and or administration actions or policy. In past retaliatory measures, they did not hurt me personally, but the very low-income persons that Home Inc. looks to help. A perfect example is the community block grant application that Home Inc. submitted to the city. Even though the Finance Committee had already reviewed our application and had made their recommendations to this council, several other persons chose to make our application an issue. As a result, Home Inc. is now being asked to do various things that no other organization has been asked or instructed to do so. The process alone has been altered in a way that treats Home Inc.'s application different from all others. This coming from the administration that cried that cried discrimination and bigotry from different members of the community when he perceived to be treated differently when his job performance was being questioned by way of a recall. Such an issue was raised that there were news articles in the Milwaukee Journal, Sheboygan Press, and El Conquistador Spanish newspaper. It seems okay for the administration and council to treat Home Inc. different than all other applicants. But what is even more shameful is that we are expected to endure this type of treatment and not say anything of its unfairness, malice, or discriminatory nature. Now this administration is looking to silence me permanently, but who else will suffer from this misguided action? I can tell you, in no uncertain terms, and the individuals that will be affected by this resolution are more, more likely city employees. One example is any police officer that is not a city resident can put his or her life in harm's way to protect anyone in this, in this council chamber, but will not be able to come to this council to speak at the public forum. Another example is that any fireman that is not a city resident can put his life or her life in harm's way by entering a burning building to help anyone in this council chamber, but could not come before this council to speak at the public forum. Was it not the same administration and council person in Rene Shusha who also raised the question of city residency for all city employees? Could it be that this resolution is intended to silence not only myself, but also other possible individuals who do not support this administration and council's policies and actions? Where are the traditional supporters of free speech? I have yet to read anything about this resolution in the Sheboygan Press. You would think that they would be concerned about any curtailment of free speech. Could it be that the Sheboygan Press is more concerned about supporting this administration than finding fault in its actions? I would challenge the press to be vigilant in not supporting the eroding of any free speech, no matter how small it may seem. Today it is the public forum. Tomorrow it may be what can be written in the newspaper about the government or any public official. If, the, if uh, WHBL would, would, I also challenge WHBL not to buckle under any pressure and return to be the bastion of free speech. By compromising on free speech today, you may not be able or willing to champion any unpopular stand or cause in the future. A prime example is Venezuela, where President Chavez is not allowing the renewal of the BBC television broadcasting license because he does not agree with what they say about him as a leader. Please do not vote for this resolution and the limit of free speech. And I'd like to quote from the letter to the editor that was in here from the mayor himself, where he says, as I listen, or it says here, I look forward to more listening sessions and hearing what is important to you as we make Sheboygan a better place to live and raise a family. Well, apparently he's, he wants to hear what you have to say at the public sessions, but not at the public forum. Thank you very much. Thank you, Henry. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to respond to that. <clears throat> Generally, I, I don't like to reply, but when my name has been referred to, I believe I have a right to, to reply. I think Mr. Capitello uh, compliments himself too much over this resolution when he implies or accuses this administration and me by name that I am trying to hush people from expressing their opinions or voice their opinions. I think it's totally incorrect. He is connecting dots that aren't there, jumping to conclusions. If you look at the resolution, it has, does not have my name anywhere on it. Why he chooses to try to connect me to it is beyond me, but I can only imagine, and I probably wouldn't be wrong. 
What is being brought before you tonight is not a denial of free speech. Anyone has a right to speak anywhere they want to, but speaking before this elected body is a privilege which you have bestowed upon your citizens. Otherwise, you would have 3,000 people come in here saying anything they wanted to say. This is not a rule that has been put in place by me, not a rule that probably wasn't put in place by any of you. This is a rule that has been in place for a long time and has worked just fine. If Mr. Capitello feels that he is saying things we don't want to hear, again, I think he compliments himself too much. I want to hear from anybody and everybody in the right manner, in the right forum, at the right time, and under the right privilege. And for anyone to implicate me in trying to deny anyone's freedom of speech is just totally, absolute wrong. And I would hope that at some point Mr. Capitello finds it in his own heart to apologize because what he just said tonight is an insult to me and an insult to every one of you. Please continue. Next on the list is Jeff Shuko. Jeff, can you give me your home address, please? 2303 South 17th Street. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. I, I know uh, people have heard me speak here before, and I wanted to mention that I am representing my company, Great Lakes Avian Pest Control, in which I have been looking into our problems with migratory birds that we've had in our parks and on our beaches. And uh, uh, with that in mind, I just wanted to mention that the mild winter has delayed bird migrations again this year, along with a lesser degree of algae and bacteria die-off. This could adversely affect the, the next swim season from June to August. Calling the Sheboygan County Health Department to relay my concerns, no one was available, so I left a message. My phone call was not returned, so I then sent an email to Mr. Hippensteel of the Sheboygan County Health Department, dated December 9, 2006, detailing potential health, potential health threats to citizens. To date, I have not heard from anyone. And I just wanted to point out that I have contacted health department officials in other counties where I received an immediate response. Uh, meanwhile, in looking over records for the past swim season, the Water Quality Report to Congress, the Environmental Protection Agency's Beach Profile Reports, and Wisconsin Beach Health websites were found to have conflicting data. These changes downplayed the extent to which the beach contamination has worsened. All beaches tested in Sheboygan and Terry Andrews State Park have advisory and closing records that are not accurately represented in the EPA and report to Congress. Copies of these websites I have included. And I will briefly go through just a few to give everyone an idea as to what I'm referring to. The county, which uh, does the actual testing, and this has been standardized throughout the state and the country, so Congress has a method of judging which beaches need more attention, which areas uh, have problems that are worsening, which ones are getting better, so they have some ideas to where to direct their funding. Uh, example here, the records from the Sheboygan County for this last year rated uh, Deland Park with 25 advisories and closings. Yet on the EPA's uh, beach profile report for Deland Park Beach, there were four uh, advisories and closings listed. General King Park Beach, there were three listed when in fact there were actually 15 advisories and closings to the, uh, uh, that particular beach. Uh, Blue Harbor Beach, the EPA's report listed seven beach advisories and closings where there were in fact actually 20 advisories and closings that were documented by the Sheboygan County Health Department. Uh, this goes on and on. Uh, and I had also checked as a reference uh, Terry Andrews State Park's uh, beaches, which were actually, let me see here, here we are, State Park uh, South Picnic Beach. They listed nine closings in the year and advisories in the year 2006. There were actually on the Sheboygan County website 43. Uh, 
Uh, Kohler Andrews State Park Nature Center Beach. There were nine listed on the EPA's website. There were actually 46 listed on the county's site for the year. And I, I go by the county's uh, website, by the way, because I was present at all this testing the last summer and I was more or less documenting what was going on. But for some reason, somehow, and I'm not going to assess any blame, this data was either lost or altered en route to the federal government. Uh, Terry Andrews State Park North Beach, there were 10 listed closings and advisories for 2006. There were actually 44. Beach data for uh, the State Park North Picnic Beach, there were 10 closings and advisories listed in 2006 when actually there were 50 advisories and closings listed. Uh, this sort of information I know the public uses to determine the condition of the beaches, of which I do too, and in rating my business and any progress that's made. So when I ran across these discrepancies, I, and I hadn't heard from the Sheboygan County Health Department, I did contact Congressman Petri, uh, Senator Leibham, Congressman, or I should say Senator Cole, who forwarded my in information because of the time-sensitive nature of, of this, this sort of thing. He forwarded it to the EPA, asking them to contact me directly and develop a correspondence with me, which he would like relayed back to them. Excuse me, Jeff, your five minutes are up. Would you like the additional minute? If I may. Go ahead. Um, so in closing, uh, there's also a report that goes to Congress every once in a while, which is the Beaches Monitoring Water Quality Report to Congress. And in there, because of these, this, this data not being transferred accurately for whatever reason, uh, Deland Park Beach was rated a medium priority, and it should be a high priority. Uh, General King Park Beach was rated a medium priority, and it actually should be a high priority also, which doesn't look good. But uh, this is inaccurate, what's been relayed to the federal government. And I would like to see that we, instead of forget about these sort of things or problems, I hope they go away, that we jump on this sort of thing and use this as a way of actually enhancing our tourism and the draw of our people by taking a situation like this and rectifying it. Uh, one of the things I've developed to help with that Is this, this little remote control dog? Jeff, uh, I'm sorry, your minute is up. Oh, that's that's quite all right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> that's it. Thank you very much. Moving moving along, there is a hearing tonight to amend the City of Sheboygan official <laughs> zoning code to repeal and recreate sections of the historic preservation regulations of the City of Sheboygan Zoning Code relating to certificates of appropriateness and recognition of historic structures, sites, and district. Is there anyone here that would like to address the Common Council? Is there anyone that would like to address the Council? Is there anyone that would like to address the Council? President Berg. Yes, move to close hearings. Second. So motion and second to close hearing. Any discussion on that motion? There being none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda, President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I uh, would uh, move to uh, accept and file all the ROs, uh, approve and adopt all the RCs, and pass the resolutions and general ordinances. All three of them. All three of them. <laughs> second. <laughs> motion and second, under discussion. If you'll notice, this is the longest consent agenda we've had, but even if it had 100, which it still takes the same amount of time, okay? Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. And Bourne? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions to be referred, 19-4. Report of officers, 2. 19.5 through 19.10 to be referred. Resolutions introduced three, 19.11 by Alderman Manny, calling for the governor and legislature to address the health care crisis. Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Put resolution upon its passage. Under discussion. 
Thank you. <clears throat> we all know that there is a health care crisis in the land. <clears throat> it is a local issue, a state issue, and a national concern. If this crisis is not addressed, the fabric of our personal and public lives is going to be adversely affected for years to come. Beyond that, the ability of a city like Sheboygan to provide essential services is going to be substantially impaired. Put in perspective, I remind us all that the health care costs for the city increased 199% in the 10-year period ending in 2005. Such a rate of increase is unsustainable. Going ahead, if significant health care cost increases continue, even at a level comparable to the 2006 or 7 levels of increase, which are 7% and 12% respectively, and if the city is to continue to provide essential services at a level anywhere near the current level, it will be necessary for city employees to start paying 15% of their health care costs very soon and increase that percentage to about 30% within three years. That's my quick off the top of the head analysis. That is an undesirable scenario for city employees and the employees' unions. I offer this perspective just to put the issue in context for us as a city where it hits home. This whole area is an area which is going to be a source of deep conflict in local politics if the current situation is not addressed. At this time, there are three separate health care bills which are sitting in committee ready for consideration by the new legislature. If there is going to be any growing health in the health care system in Wisconsin, some compromise bill comprising elements of these bills needs to be sent from committee to the legislature and be approved with both the governor's blessing and support. Such a health care restructuring needs to be universal. It needs to look at employing market mechanisms to fuel competition among providers. It needs to be in the governor's budget to be implemented. Many of us have already had some orientation to these health care bills as we had a presentation in the city on November 12th, which was initially sponsored by the Wisconsin Conference of Churches and then also sponsored by many local congregations and groups, the city of Sheboygan being one. The issues at hand are universality so that the many without coverage within this state are covered. The second issue is the need for justice so that those businesses which push much of their health care cost onto the state or onto other employers no longer happens. And the third issue is the need for efficiency and cost reduction, which our current system fails to deliver. We all know that the United States spends vastly more for health care than do other developed Western nations, while our actual health status is below that of these other nations. Such a situation is intolerable. Knowing that this is the status of our health care system, movement is afoot in Congress to encourage states to step out on their own to explore alternative health care delivery systems. It's time to step up to the plate and put a lot of pressure on those who are in a position to begin that radical restructuring of the health care industry. Band-Aids can no longer provide significant health. Fundamental restructuring is essential. If we do not see that, our heads are in the sand. <clears throat> it's time to put our political pressure on Representative Terry Van Ackeren, Senator Joe Lipham, Governor Doyle, and all of those legislators who sit on that committee, which is responsible for looking at the three health care bills before them. 
We must have a well thought out plan on the table, acted upon, and soon impacting the fair city of Sheboygan and the lovely state of Wisconsin. Thus, I encourage you to pass this resolution and then tomorrow or next week to call, write, or email all of those whom this resolution asks us to contact. I thank you for your support. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I would like to uh, make an amendment to uh, Alderman Manny's resolution. Uh, I passed out a copy of the, uh, of the amendment. Uh, the first part of it is uh, on, uh, would be to insert on the first side of the sheet after the fifth whereas as follows. Could we get a motion and then second? Motion to amend? I would make a motion to amend. Second. second. Okay, now under discussion. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, and it reads as follows, whereas health savings accounts, HSAs, have become a popular option for reducing health insurance premiums for individuals, small businesses, and local governments, and the fact that all but a handful of states, including Wisconsin, do not allow for the contributions to HSAs to be deducted from state income taxes. We urge the governor to reconsider his two previous vetoes and allow HSA contributions to be deducted from Wisconsin's state income taxes. And then on the second side, uh, in the last paragraph, uh, would be inserted uh, on the third line after the words uh, bills as follows, and for the governor to reconsider his two vetoes, allowing Wisconsin's state income tax deduct deductibility for contributions to health savings accounts. If I could, for, please, discu please for discussion. Yes, please continue. Uh, I thank I thank Alderman uh, Alderman Manny for bringing forth this resolution. Uh, it's very very timely, and just to expand a little bit on what he said, uh, health care costs in southeastern Wisconsin are not only the highest in Wisconsin, they're if not the highest in the nation, close to the top in the nation, and these health savings accounts. Uh, when I when I had my business, I didn't have one, but I talked to several small business people that had health savings accounts and they were able to uh, lower their their premiums for themselves and their employees by as much as 20 or 30 percent. Also local governments, uh, one of the documents that I referred to uh, to finance tonight and also uh, salary and grievance committee, uh, Manitowoc County is already on board with health savings accounts and also and also uh, Calumet County for their employees. And so I, it, is a, it is a very timely issue besides the bills that Alderman Manny uh, has talked about. So uh, I encourage your uh, uh, support of the amendment that I'm making. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Clayunas on the amendment. Not, uh, not on the amendment. Excuse okay. me. I'd like to speak on resolution before that. So I, I won't talk at this time. Okay. Do you want to just wait? Hold yes. on. Yes. Thank, okay, thank you. On the amendment, <clears throat> any more discussion? Please call the roll. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Enberg? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries an amendment. Now I need a motion, Alderman Boren, uh, to the motion to approve as amended. Uh, Thank you, and I'll make a, a motion to approve as amended. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like to commend uh, Alderman Manning for, for bringing this up. It's been a passion of his for the last couple, three months or four months. Uh, I've attended some meetings with him. And from a perspective where we at Salvation Army offer some free health care, it is a drop in the bucket to what is needed in, in this community and what is needed in the, in the state. So I really think that... Uh, we need to get smart and look at health care as a right of everyone and not just the health care for the haves and the, have no health care for the have-nots. I think that's very unjust, and we have to look at it. It's hurting everyone. It's not just hurting those who don't have health care. It's hurting us who have to pay higher premiums for those who are uninsured. So thank you very much, Alderman Manny. Thank you, Alderman Clay Yunus. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I also would like to thank Alderman Manny for his work on this. 
it's very important for municipalities to do something. And if we can ur urge Madison to take a step in some direction to ease the burden of the huge costs on municipalities, this cost on municipalities will swamp us eventually if the state doesn't do something. So thank you, Alderman Manny. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and thank you, Alderperson Manning, for leading the charge on this issue. Um, I agree with the, the other, all the people that have spoken. Uh, the rising health care costs, I think, dwarfs in comparison our concern over shared revenues and where we're going um, as a city and as a county and as a state. Uh, we need to approach this from multiple levels. The health savings account is a, is a critical area. Uh, combining entities for strength and buying, we need to move forward in all those directions. And I, I commend you for uh, keeping this issue on the front burner. Thank you, Alman Hannah. <clears throat> Any more discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleonis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Boren, aye. Berg, aye. and Serta. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries 19, 1912 by Alderman Ratke, expressing the city's desire for continued over the road bus service serving downtown Sheboygan. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I would make a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion. Um, it was made aware a couple of weeks ago that. The Greyhound service currently serving the city of Sheboygan is going to be pulling out sometime this month, and that would leave the people of Sheboygan without a downtown service based upon the information I had. I'd like to ask Mr. McDonald to uh, address the council, if he could, please, and, and fill us in with the rest of the details, if that would be all right with you, sir. Thank you, Alderman Reckie. Mr. McDonald, would you please come up, sir? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the council, honorable mayor. Uh, Alderman Radke and I have had this discussion uh, about the notice of Greyhound. Uh, they have indicated they are going to stop serving this area. Uh, actually, it sounds like the entire Lakeshore region they're going to stop serving uh, this month. I have had discussions with a company out of lower Michigan called Indian Trails, which I believe is a Trailways affiliate, who is going to be taking over some of this service and will be providing service into Sheboygan. They anticipate service starting February 1st. Uh, however, they were looking at stopping on the far south side of town, just right off the highway. I have a concern uh, from a transportation standpoint where the majority of customers that would use the type of Greyhound service that's available really live in the central downtown area of our city. And, and I think it's imperative that we try to encourage them to come into the downtown area. Uh, through our discussions, uh, they wanted to save time. Uh, I, I've spent a lot of time encouraging them to come back to downtown, trying to see what we can do to, to make that happen. Uh, ideally, we'd like to see them in our uh, transit transfer center uh, right out here at, at Center and uh, uh, Penn Avenue block there. And basically, they've committed now that they will come and stay in the downtown area if we can locate somebody to become a ticket agent for them. And yeah, we've agreed to try and make that happen somehow. We're, we're trying to find somebody to do that. Uh, I've been talking with a number of uh, people in the community already. So uh, we're hoping we can have this new company, Indian Trails, servicing our downtown area. But I think it's imperative that we continue to uh, show support for the service into the community. I, th I think it's really needed. Alderman Clayton. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. McDonald, is uh, there any consideration given to having a bus routed to the place uh, on the south side of town where the bus, where the trailways bus would come? Is, is was there any consideration on that, or is there any possibility on that? Because I know Walmart's out there, and you know. Um, that's that's a very good question. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, that was our first discussion with them. However, uh, the time frame that they're looking at coming through is going to be very difficult uh, for us to manage. Uh, as an example, the bus that is heading, uh, let's say it would be southbound, is going to be coming through at about 945 at night. 
So anybody getting off, by the time they got off, the bus is already off the street, so they wouldn't be able to get back. They would have to utilize a, a private taxi service or a family member. And uh, the, the northbound bus was coming through at about 6.15, 6.30, and I know they're working on that schedule a little bit. And again, that's out there before we can get people to that location to, because they want them there about an hour ahead of time to be ready to get their tickets and such. So it's really outside the parameters of our service hours. So, and that's another concern. I, I do know that there's been uh, citizens that live in the, the proximity of the downtown uh, from the senior uh, apartment complexes that have called the new bus company begging them to stay in the downtown because they can pretty much walk from their, their apartments or condominiums to the uh, transfer center. So again, that's a concern and it was a very valid question that we've looked at. Oh, Thank you, Mayor. Um, so as, it, as you see it now, uh, if we can find somebody willing to be a ticket agent, they're willing to, to work with us with the downtown location, is that Yes, that, that is correct. They have agreed to uh, come into the downtown area if we can locate a ticket agent for them. That was my last discussion uh, around the 30th. Well, that's, that's encouraging. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Thank you. <clears throat> and while, while it may not seem like a lot, of, I thank Alderman Clayunas for suggesting if there's a possibility of rerouting buses, it's for the people who use this bus, it's going to make a huge impact on their lives. So. We're going to take a vote. We don't need a roll call on this, do you? Not really. No. All those in favor of uh, passing resolution number 1912, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 1913 through 1915 to be referred. Ordinance introduced 10 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 1821, and RO. Number 4120607 oh, by the City Plan Commission recommending repealing and recreating sections of the historic preservation regulations of the City of Sheboygan zoning code relating to certificates of appropriateness in recognition of historic structures, sites, and districts and passing the attached substitute ordinance. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and adopt the RO and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and second, under discussion. There being none, please, yes. Uh, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just for clarification, I, I recognize that uh, the, uh, I believe it's, it was as a result of the meeting at the Plan Commission, a substitute general ordinance came out um, to reflect that it's the council that makes the final decision regarding historic structure sites and districts and uh, what's what's in this substitute I think is fine however it should be aware that this was that that portion was addressed previously in general ordinance number 940506 that passed uh, on February 20th of 06 just last year uh, I think what the problem was is because the zoning code is not uh, being updated. And until recently, uh, I think recently it was transferred over to the planning department to try to keep it updated. But that was done back February of 06 to make, uh, make the council the final decider to, uh, and have the Historic Preservation, Preservation Commission just make recommendations to the council for designating historic site structures and, and districts. But, uh, so I think that was the rationale for the substitute ordinance. Uh, as I say, because that language is in there, I don't see it being a problem, uh, this being acted on, but uh, to allay any concerns, it is already in there. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Anything else? Okay, please call the roll. Clayunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Susha, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Warren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. Hannah, Aye. and Kittleson. Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1764, resolution number 1860607 by Alderman Graf, Meyer, and Kittleson. 
authorizing the Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations to negotiate settlement of insurance claims not to exceed $15,000. Alderman Meyer. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion. Um, this just kind of frees up um, some of the timing to um, get back to the people that have claims with the city. Right now, it goes through such a long process and things are held up, so we're just giving the authority to get things moved along a little faster. And that is because uh, we have uh, Ed Surik. Mr. Surik is also risk management, in charge of risk management. And Alderman, as Alderman Meyer has stated, it does, it, it's a lengthy process. And by authorizing him to, to settle, uh, not a limit not to exceed is, uh, is wise. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think this is a, a real fine idea. I, the, I was, I'd even be willing to go with, with higher limits, but 15000 is fine because it just moves things along. And this is well uh, under industry standards for doing this sort of settlement. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Anyone else? Okay, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Thanks. Serta? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clayunas? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1836, resolution number 200-06-07 by Alderman Susha, allowing only Sheboygan residents to speak at the public forum during a common council meeting. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Thank you. Um, I'd like to explain a little bit about why this uh, came into existence. A couple of months ago, I saw one of my constituents um, out with the rest of the public after a council meeting. And when I was speaking to that constituent after the meeting, they had told me that they had a desire to speak at the council at the public forum, but they couldn't because the five seats had already been taken. And then later on, I reflected back and I looked at who spoke, and there were two people on the agenda that didn't live in the city. So in essence, what happened was my constituent, somebody who voted to put me in my seat, they were shut out. And if you talk about open government, you have to ask yourself a question. Is our current system open to the citizens of Sheboygan? And the answer is no. We have a closed government to the citizens of Sheboygan. Because if it was open, they were, she would have been able to speak. But she wasn't allowed to. So that's part of the reason I bought, brought this forward. The other part is, is that I'm not sure if everyone's aware that recently we had somebody stand up there and then uh, Madam City Clerk always asked for their name and address, and they gave us an address that doesn't exist. So somebody stood up there and lied to our face. So the second part of the resolution is to ask the city clerk uh, to verify addresses for people who sign up to speak at the public forum so this doesn't happen again. Um, if you think into recent history, we recently had a situation where uh, there was a proposed dog run. And uh, there was a lot of miscommunication whether we were actually going to put a, a dog run in this park or not. And there were a lot of people that wanted to speak. And it was an item that was on the agenda that night. And I'm not sure if all the people that wanted to speak, all the actual residents that live around that park, I don't know if they were all given the opportunity to speak or not. Um, but that's another example of why we need to think about uh, providing a current system that couldn't be used up by five non-residents. You know, for example, if for some reason there were five people from Plymouth that wanted to share their thoughts on any particular subject, they could sign up for the public forum, and that means the citizens who voted us into these seats would not be allowed to speak. Is that open government? I don't think so. I agree with what the mayor said earlier about it being a privilege to speak here. I think that if we passed a resolution taking the public forum off the agenda, you know, that's our prerogative if we, if we decided to do it. But I think it's a nice way for citizens to provide their input at the last minute to make sure we understand their viewpoints. Because sometimes they're not aware of a situation as it's going through the process and going to subcommittees. So it's a nice way for them to get up and share their thoughts right before we vote on something. Um, it was said earlier that this might be a way to shut out certain segments of the population. Um, no, it's not. Because non-residents always have the option to call the alderman, call the mayor, 
They can submit uh, their concern or suggestion in writing. It would be referred to the proper committee. At that committee me meeting, they'd be welcome to speak and share their suggestions. And then it would come back to the Common Council for a vote. And when it comes back to Common Council, it would be up to us. If we wanted to open up the floor to anybody, we have that prerogative. At any time, we can open up the floor. So it's not like we're shutting anybody out. But what we're doing is we're giving a priority to the citizens that elected us to represent their views. I'm not here to represent the views of anyone from Plymouth, Chicago, Door County, wherever. I'm here to represent the views of my constituents. So that's something you have to think about tonight. If uh, you as an alderman vote against this resolution, the message you are sending to your constituents is that you are more interested in what people outside this community have to say than what your constituents have to say. So when it comes down to deciding who sits in the cha these chairs, that decision is made by the people who live within the borders. So I'd like you to keep that in mind because it's time that we hear what those citizens have to say and give them top priority. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman, <coughs> excuse me, Alderman Susha, Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I would like to offer a friendly amendment uh, to this. My, my amendment would be that um, we continue with the format of having five uh, slots for public input. Four of those are reserved for city residents. One slot is reserved for a non-city resident. Um, I, I certainly agree with Alderperson Susha. I have had constituents also voice concern where they have been shut out. Um, and I think that this compromise protects the integrity that the that four out of the five slots are protected for uh, citizens of Sheboygan, and we have a, the fifth slot for non-city residents. Is that a motion? That's a motion. Is there a second? Yeah. Motion and second. Thank you. Under discussion on the amendment. Now I see three lights. Alderman Vanderwiel, you were next on the amendment. I'll turn you off. Alderman Manny on the amendment. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this would apply to uh, the amendment for the original uh, resolution. Question for Madam City Clerk. Uh, typically, do we have people who ask to speak who are not able to speak because we do have a full agenda already? How often does that happen? Um, in the past, probably in the past three, four years, we may have turned one person away or two people away, but typically we have five. At one point, we had some interest because there were some issues that were coming up and we may have turned away two or three. I don't have a huge amount and we don't do a waiting list because that becomes an administrative nightmare. So typically we have five that call in and then they are, we, we usually tell them, you know, if you want to address an issue, you know, that you can't talk at the public forum because it's full, we tell them to call their alderman. Thank you. And I think, Mayor, that's important information to have in our thought process. And I'm open to the amendment at hand. Uh, I also entertain thoughts about changing, offering an alternative amendment. I haven't yet decided where it came out, whereby we would have five city residents able to speak and two uh, non-city, recognizing that on most occasions we wouldn't have seven actually speaking. So that, that's my thought process. There's but, no motion But you yet. may. You may. Yes. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Alderman Kittleson on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm just wondering then we, if we go with the five uh, or four city residents and one non-city, what happens if, if there are several, uh, the, the city position or the city forum slots don't get filled and we'd have a few more outside people that wanted to speak? I, Madam City Clerk, has that, do you, do that? you foresee that yes. as a problem? I would say that if it's a quieter council meeting, you could potentially have one person that's a city resident call and the four and the three others are left open and then you have one person allowed to speak outside, yes, and then we would have three open spots. I, I could see that happening. I mean, tonight we had two people speak. Right, so, we had you know, two we, people. Oftentimes we have five full, but you know, tonight is an example. We have two. I and then know. they're often given the chance to speak. You can tell them you speak on the topic the next week, sign up for the forum, or in, you know, at the next council meeting, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Alderman Clayunas, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd like to offer a friendly amendment to your amendment uh, that we could set up a, it be a priority system uh, that uh, city residents and taxpayers have priority over non-residents and non-taxpayers. 
that they would have priority. So that in other words, if there were three residents that wanted to speak and two, and one taxpayer that wanted to speak who did not live in the city but was a taxpayer within the city that they could speak and there would be one left over or in some cases like tonight there'd be three left over but the priorities would be for residents and taxpayers and the leftover positions maybe five uh, positions would be given to anyone who else wanted to speak is that a motion it's a it's an amendment to his amendment to my alderman hannah's amendment Clarification. Are, are, are we saying that? Alderman Hanna, please. Yes. Um, the, um, the amendment to my amendment, is it keeping us at five total slots or is that changing? No, that. Okay, that's in there. That would be fine with okay. me. Okay, there we go. The, the motion stands as is. If Alderman Hanna accepted from the amendment, per priority be given, then it still holds under a motion and the second. I understand correctly, Mayor. Uh, the amendment uh, to what I had put forward would uh, broaden the definition of city residents to include taxpayers. In that way, it encompasses business owners that happen to live outside the city. And I'm perfectly comfortable You're perfectly with that. okay with that. I, I will want to say one thing, though, <laughs> and I don't want to muddy the waters, but when you have an organization that has a board of directors. The board of directors is the entity that pays taxes, not the employees. You're gonna have an employee that comes up here and says, I represent so, they may or may not, unless you have proof of that board of directors saying, we're the taxing entity, we pay taxes, he doesn't, he works for us. So just keep that in mind. Alderman Ryan, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> On the amendment, please. On the amendment, um, the amendment is to allow, the, basically what we're going to say with the amendment is that taxpayers are considered to be the same as city residents as far as having four taxpayer, city residents slash taxpayers and one non-resident slash taxpayer. Correct? Alderman um, um, Cayunas, would you please? Yes, my amendment was that they would be there would be a priority set that taxpayers i mean city residents and taxpayers would have priority over any other speakers at the forum but in any case that they had priority so if there were slots open that would the priority had been filled by whoever wanted to speak from a resident and taxpayer point of view and if there were three open anyone who was not a resident or taxpayer could still speak within the five excuse me Thank you. Please continue, Alderman Ryan. I, I, I would, uh, I would uh, endorse this, Your Honor. It sounds like a good idea. It uh, hardly seems like the system was broken before this if we've only turned away three people over the last several years. Um, but uh, this will uh, ensure that city residents do have a voice. Um, I believe that taxpayers uh, also have an interest in the city and in uh, what happens to their investment in the city. So I believe that this is a good idea. Thank, Thank you. you, Alderman Ryan. Next, we have Alderman Verhessel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, just for clarity's sake, if I understand this right, then one one of the five slots is still exclusive to a non-resident. No, it's not. Uh -uh. Okay, no. so it's open to the first five can be filled by residents. They have priority. They, okay, have, priority. they have priority. So if they if there are five standing there, they have pri I would say they'd have priority okay. over someone who is not a taxpayer or a resident. So if they fill the first five slots, that's, that's it. For, that's, that's it. it then. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you, Alderman. Okay, now we have President Burke. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I, once again, we have an elegant solution that is much broader than the problem. <laughs> Alderman Ryan said it isn't broke. I don't think it's uh, broke either. I guess uh, as I look at it, I think in general we need less laws, more, more than we need more laws. And uh, I'm just opposed to, I guess, legislation of something like this because I don't see it to be a problem. And I think we can debate the amendment, but if I recall parliamentary procedure, a motion to file takes precedent over any amendment or the motion, if I'm correct. It doesn't? Motion to file does not take precedent. Then I will sit down. Thank you. <laughs> Alderman Serta on the amendment. President, Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I do understand, and I commend my fellow alderpersons, the, the spirit in, of the amendment. 
but my concern with limiting it to just one outside residence, I had some concerns um, that if there, the four slots weren't or were available and there was two or such and now we're changing it, but um, I don't think there has been a tremendous problem that warrants this change. Um, therefore, I'm not going to support the amendment and the re resolution based on that. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Serta. Alderman Radke. Thank you, Your Honor. As I listen to this amendment go around here, looking at this piece of paper, I'm looking at the original resolution. I think it's been pretty much diluted back to square one anyway. What I would, and I'm not going to make an amendment, but my suggestion would be to just simply make it five city residents. And then if five city residents do not sign up, which usually is not the case anyway, um, uh, then anybody else, it would be open to anybody else. But we, the five city residents would have top priority. At that point in time, it's open to anybody. But that would be my solution to the problem. But the amendment, as I hear it right now, the way I'm looking at it in this document, it seems to me like it's, it's right back to square one, unless I'm misinterpreting this and maybe the city attorney could bring us up to speed on where we sit with it as opposed to the original resolution. Thank you. I think the, the effect of Alderman Clayuna's amendment, friendly amendment, deals with your situation there too, Alderman Radke. Alderman Vanderwill, you had you were up and I missed you there. Sorry. Thank you, Your Honor. Oh, I'm sorry. I had it on. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I appreciate the amendments and the problem solving. A few years ago, we uh, we had an issue and and we brought a resolution, or I brought a resolution into law and licensing, and we worked on on making it so that the people at public forum had to say what city they lived in, because before that you never had to. So I appreciate that. I don't I don't necessarily agree with the amendment because I think we're complicating it. My feeling is we could just make it to 10 people talk, and if 10 people fill it, well, it doesn't matter where they're from. I, I would prefer we send this, if this doesn't pass, the amendment doesn't pass, that we send it to community the whole or law and licensing and problem solve there instead of doing it on the floor here. But that is uh, my opinion, and we will see where this goes. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman. Ryan, second time. Uh, thank you again, Your Honor. It appears we're making a mountain out of a molehill here. Um, therefore, uh, in order to expedite the process this evening, I, um, you know, as much as there are good intentions here, uh, I don't believe there was much of a problem to start with. Um, I'm not going to support this. I will uh, vote to file. Thank you. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I believe if there is even one taxpayer that's turned away, that's one too many. And if waiting till the next time to speak and their issue has already been voted on and taken place, well, we're not doing right by the taxpayers. And I think we should support, I will support the amendment. Um, I think the taxpayers should have priority in speaking to this council that they have voted in. Thank you. Thank you. There are Alder Sushi, I'll be right with you. There are some, um, interestingly, there are some people in the community that would want to make an issue such as this, an emotional and political issue. I would ask that you don't get caught in that. The bottom line here is we have a duty, a responsibility to our residents first. Those are the people we represent. Those are the people that elect you. No one else can elect you. No one else can vote for you. Our responsibility primarily, first and foremost, lies to the residents of Sheboygan, the city of Sheboygan. And I will always honor that above and beyond anything else. Those are the people that put me here. Those are the people that put you in your seats. This does not have to become political. It does not have to become emotional. The duty that we have is very plain, very basic. It's right before you. Alderman Susha. Um, thank you, Your Honor. I was just hoping that uh, Madam City Clerk could read back the friendly amendment to the friendly amendment so we all have it straight, and then I'll call the question. Thanks. Um, from what I gather, and you can correct me, Alderman Clayunas, is that the friendly amendment was to continue with the five slots and to give priority to residents to include um, city residents and taxpayers, which means if you're a taxpayer from out of the city but you pay taxes in the city, they're included in the five slots. Is that your understanding? Thank you. Everybody got that? Okay. Call the roll on the amendment. 
Okay, Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Racky. No. Ryan. No. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. No. Serta. No. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. No. Clayunis. Aye. And Manny. Aye. Eight eyes, six noes. Motion carries. Now we need a motion as amended. Second. Motion second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Ryan. No. Susha. Aye. Vanderweel. No. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. No. Serta. No. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson? No. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Eight ayes, six noes. Motion carries. 1853, resolution number 201607 by Alderman Vanderweel, directing the Department of Public Works to post various alleys along the south side of Michigan Avenue as to no parking in alley is listed. 800, 900, 1,000, 1,100, and 1,300 blocks of Michigan Avenue. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, may I take 1854 with it? Please do. I will move that both resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I was wondering if uh, Alderman Vanderweel could tell me on... Uh, 1853, whether there was any consideration to doing the 700 block of Michigan Avenue also, as that is a mixed uh, zoning between residential and business. Uh, Ballhorn's, Ballhorn's parking lot runs in between the 7 and 800 block. Uh, my former business runs in that area. And then there's also some residentials right on the corner of 7th and Michigan who sometimes do park in the alley, and there are some semis that come through that alley that want to get into Great Lakes Blue Printers and service some of those other buildings. Uh, uh, have, had, did you talk about the 700 block at all? Thank you. Alderman Vanderweel, please respond. Thank you, Your Honor. The reason why we took this area is because there was a change of the bus route, and when the bus comes in, in that direction, if there was a car parked there, they wouldn't be able to make the turn. So usually we don't, we don't do this, because of the 15 feet, it's a law, state law anyway. And uh, as far as the concerns that you have, we could bring that up in committee and address those in committee. Thank you. Okay, please call the roll. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer Aye. and Montemayor, Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 1917, an ordinance by Alderman Susha, Clayunas, Montemayor, and Kittleson, amending the municipal code so as to add various positions to the municipal court table of organization, Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second, under discussion. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, what we're doing is adding a part-time municipal court assistant deputy clerk. And the purpose for this is that we have a municipal court right now that is functioning pretty well. And we're issuing a lot of uh, citations and fines. And it comes time to collect. And we don't have anybody really in place to collect these fines. So this position will easily pay for itself based on the fines that this person is going to be collecting. And I think in the long run, the city is going to come out ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Vice President Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to mention that at one time this was a very contentious issue. Um, but with this, it's just evidence that the city is moving in the right direction and that the individuals who made that decision, who worked really hard on getting the municipal court up and going, um, like it said, we have another position that warrants the success of the municipal court. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Serta. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Alderman Susha, could you give me an idea and the rest of the council what the salary is going to be for this individual and with this number of hours a week, is that going to include any benefits? And then also, uh, I know the municipal court has been struggling with their, with their bottom line and, and I agree with you, it'll probably bring in some more revenue, but 
do you, uh, can you predict on, is this gonna have any effect on the bottom line of the municipal court getting in the uh, black ink rather than the red ink? Thank you. Thank you, Alder Masusha. Um, thank you, I will try to answer your questions. Um, we did approve uh, two positions because the deputy clerk also left and I believe the deputy clerk makes in the neighborhood, I believe it was around $15 an hour and I believe this position was coming in at about $11.50 an hour. Um, so that gives you a rough idea of what it is. As far as benefits, um, the, it's the same across city lines as far as 20 hours a week. I believe they get the single plan coverage. Um, and then the last part of the question was about getting out of the red. What You're right, right now we are operating the court at a bit of a loss, but if we were able to recoup a lot of the money that's owed to us, I think it's going to bring us up to the break-even point is, is pretty much what we were told, and that would also cover the... Uh, the payment for this position. Thank you, Alderman Susha. Alderman Clayunas. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd just like to add that the city court is um, doing better than uh, we thought. The finance director thought it would take longer to catch up to recoup, and they're doing better, so we have hopes that this will continue. Thank you. And Alderman Hanna. Oh, great. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's, it's my observation that, that um, this is a real positive because where, where these operations fail is in the collection of outstanding fines. I mean, that's, that's where, you know, that's the slippery slope that all of a sudden you've got a real large receivable and nobody's going after it. So you need to be staffed appropriately to stay on top of your information. Um, so I think this is the move in the right direction. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Attorney McLean? Uh, just to clarify, uh, you know, reading, blacking, I don't think that that's an issue. The, the court is making money for the city. The comparison always is, uh, are we bringing in as much revenue as we would have with the circuit court? Circuit court, we were bringing in net, I think it was 450,000. So that's what you're comparing. You're, under any circumstance, it's a positive. You're, you're bringing in substantial amount of revenue, but you're comparing you know, a municipal court to circuit court, really. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Okay, please call the roll. Ryan? Aye. Susha? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Racky? Aye. 14 ayes. Motion carries. 1918, a resolution by Alderman Susha directing a public hearing to change the text of the historic preservation regulations of the City of Sheboygan Zoning Code relating to the rights of property owners, relating to the designation of historic structures, sites, and districts. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 1919 will be referred to City Plan Commission and Historic Preservation Commission other matters, and before we uh, close on other matters, after Attorney McLean um, uh, finishes, please don't make a motion to adjourn yet. There's a final comment. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 1920 is a communication from Michael and Karen Rock requesting slow children at play signs on the 2300 block of Pennsylvania Avenue between Evans and the corner of North McKinley Street. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 1921 is also communication from Michael and Karen Rock requesting a traffic stoplight study for the intersection of North 25th Street and Kohler Memorial Drive. That will also be referred to public protection and safety. 1922 is <clears throat> submitting the Harbor Center Marina balance sheet from operations dated November 2006 as submitted by Skipper Marine. And that will be a referred to Marina and Harbor Committee. 1923 is an RO by the city clerk submitting in the November 2006 circuit court report of fines, municipality fees, and city officer fees, in a total amount of $14,618.93. That will go to finance. 1924 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2007 and June 30, 2008. And that will be referred to law and licensing. 1925 is an RO by the purchasing agent submitting a tabulation of bid number 1729-07 received on December 28th for the purchase of 14 Ford Crown Victoria Patrol duty sedans, less trades, 
and two Ford Crown Victoria detective duty sedans without trade for the police department. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 1926 is an RO by the finance director treasurer submitting as a matter of record a report of a, a list of vouchers amounting to 16 million plus has been audited by the finance director treasurer and paid during November 2006. That will be referred to finance. 1927 is a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into contract for the purchase of 14 police department patrol duty sedans, less trades, and two detective duty sedans without trade. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 1928 is an ordinance amending section 38-3 of the municipal code relating to wards and voting polls so as to change the location of the 8th ward voting poll to St. Andrew, St. Andrew Lutheran Church. And that lies over. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Alderman Susha. Thank you, Your Honor. I just would like to read a statement. Um, when I became alderman almost two years ago, I felt that the city was like a derailed train. The city was almost at their maximum borrowing capacity. Fees had been implemented by the previous administration to cover basic services. City services were cut to address budget problems. The unions were working without a contract and nobody was held accountable for their actions. I believe that with the insightful leadership of Mayor Perez, I feel that the train has been put back on its tracks. I've accomplished my short-term goals as alderman by making sure that the wheel tax ended last week, by freezing the 2007 tax levy, which squeezed a lot of fat out of the city budget, by supporting the building of a $9 million state-of-the-art police station instead of a $17 million one that the taxpayers couldn't afford, I created a referendum to see if the voters wanted a casino here. I supported the refinancing of the conference center debt, which decreased interest payments and shaved about 10 years off the loan, so more room tax will go to promoting our city. And I supported the efforts initiated by the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance and supported by the citizens of this community and the Chamber of Commerce by bringing in a proposal to phase out the stormwater fee. The only two short-term goals I have left are to review the city's health insurance options to ensure we have good coverage at the best possible rate and eliminate middle management positions on the table of organization while making sure we have enough people actually doing the work on the street. Since these two goals will be met in the next few months, I decided not to seek re-election. I think the current administration understands we need to do things differently and we don't need to scare the public by threatening to cut services to balance the budget. In fact, with TIF-8 expiring next year, and TIF-8 is the area out by the new Walmart, the Holiday Inn Express, and things like that, with TIF-8 expiring next year, uh, the city, the schools, and the county will have access to a new pot of tax money. This new money should help all taxing entities in Sheboygan hold the tax rate, tax rate flat in 2008 and perhaps even decrease it in 2009. I think that the conductor of the Sheboygan train, along with the help of the aldermen, are going to keep this train on its tracks and heading towards a successful future. And I wish you all lots of luck. We wish you luck, Elman Susha. Thank you. Is there a second? Who's second? All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Stand adjourned.